Hi, I'm Scott Caesar. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're listening to the laugh and the, the quick introduction, that's because Brother Sonny cut out my stress time of trying to get these slides shown to you. Uh, but speaking about being known, has it ever happened to you with a, with a friend that is so magnificent that when you find out they know who you are, your life changes. Well, a guy named David, a guy named David wrote in the 139th Psalm, search me and know me. He said, oh Lord, search me and know me. Search me and know me. And in the 139th Psalm, in the first chapter, he invites God in to number one, search him and know him. And uh, he goes on to get his mind blown. Why? Because as he's speaking this inspired word into an inspired man, as he's thinking, he says, God, search me. God, know me. Because David knew that if God knew him, if I say at the time, if God knew him, that was the greatest thing that a man can have in his life. Do you know God? We say, yeah. We say, yeah. Scripture says, rather God knows you. What does that do for you? God knowing you. Well, these two Hebrew words are magnificent words. I love it. The word search here in English means examine. So David is saying, you've examined me. You've searched me, past tense. You have examined and searched me. That Hebrew word designates an examination so intense that it looks through and inside its object. That's how intense that examination is. It's like a doctor knowing every inch inside of you and being able to see inside of you. So David says, search me. Second word, second Hebrew word here for know is used three times in the first few verses. It's the word yada. Yada was designated in Hebrew language as the most intimate knowledge and experiential knowledge, not, a, not fact, not knowing something, but experiencing what you know. That's what yada means. Not knowing something, but experiencing that which you know. Great difference. The, the word yada means to know. Its cousin in uh, the New Testament is gnesko, epinosko. You see, it's it's an intimacy and a knowledge so deep that it goes way past the conscious level and it goes to the subconscious, the soul, and the spirit. And the beautiful part about Yada is uh, it's represented by such an intimacy. I'm pausing here because I want you guys to understand. It's represented such intimacy. It's a, it was used in ancient Hebrew words as sexual intercourse for sexual intercourse it says adam knew eve that word knew was yada do you understand how intimate god knows you do you do you, do you get that do you allow yourself to understand that let's read the scripture here you know oh a little start from the beginning oh lord you have searched me and know me you know when I sit down, I mean when I stop, when I rise up, when I'm moving, you discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down. This is not, he's not asking God to do this. This is what God does, not only for David, but for you. And you're acquainted in all my ways. Listen to this. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. There's Yadar again. You know it all together. You hem me in behind me and before me. 
behind me, my past. You've taken care of my past. Every decision you make for me and what you want, you consider your love and grace for me in spite of my past. You not only forgot my sins, you've erased them. You've removed them. You go before me. You're my point man. You know what's going to happen in my life 15, 20 minutes from now, 15, 20 years from now. I don't. Why would I try to run my own life? Turn to me next to you. Go, yeah, that's silly. Now, here's where David explodes. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. This is you and I saying, my mind was blown. I can't wrap my mind around it. What blew his mind? One thing, that God knew David better than David. Not only knew himself, but could ever know himself. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is uh, a first, first Corinthians 13, 12. And it just excites me. It talks about eternity, and I'm going to turn in mind a guy. It's helped me overcome fear of death, fear of sickness. And I'm thinking, I get a promotion. I get a celebration when I get to go there. My kids hate when I talk about it. But, uh, you know, your dad, your dad right now, Brian, is, is experiencing something. And as much as he loves you, if God will go and go, you want to go back? He would say, not really. Not really, Lord. I'd rather stay here. That's how special. And what 1 Corinthians 13, 12 says is this. When you, I'm paraphrasing. When we come to the Lord face to face, you will know him then like he knows you now. Could you wrap your mind around knowing everything there is to know about God when you see him? He'll allow that. The joy, the peace. Isn't that amazing? See, that's what David couldn't wrap his mind around. And I have a rough time. I have to remind myself when I read this verse. You know, when I'm down, when I'm down and out, you say, you don't get down and out. You're a faithful man. I don't know who taught you that. But no, we get wounded sometimes. We get tired sometimes. And uh, sometimes we walk by faith, but we're numb inside. And we just keep falling forward, right? You fall forward so you won't fall backwards. And uh, it says, search me, oh God, you know me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for you. This is how I, 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 I love reading my Bible. I take a picture and the iPad, and I just love scribbling on the notes. Now, you know who knew this also? The Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul knew this, and he writes to the Galatians, better now but I'm sorry, but now you know God, meaning he's complimenting. Now you know God. You've reached a level that you know God intimately. And he says, or better still, God knows you. Better still, God knows you. You see, the Bible and its inspired writers puts the fact that you are known by God as the greatest thing in your life. Gentlemen, the joy of knowing God is in knowing God knows you. You see, Scott, that looks like a picture of a mug. You see, that, this, these words changed my life. When I realized the creator of the universe keeps the universe going, however he maintains it, you know, with a blink of an eye in one hand and holds you and I in the left hand and actually cares about our heart, cares about our feelings. Could, could you wrap your mind around that? Could, could you just think about that? Author Stephen Mansfield wrote a biography on President George W. Bush. He did a lot of research because he couldn't get President Bush on the phone. It's not something that happens. And uh, he was hoping, like you and I, that the book would be a success. A little nervous, 
not 100% confident, he went ahead and wrote the book through research and what other people told him about George W. Bush at the time who was president. And uh, it, was a, it was a beautiful book that he wrote. And uh, as he's waiting for uh, the information to come back from the publisher about how it's doing, did the critics like it? Uh, what do you think? people think, you know, when you do that, sometimes you, you when you produce something, well, all, one day the phone rang and he picked it up and says, yes, Stephen Mansfield. And he says, hello, this is the White House. Could you please hold for President George Bush? Well, after he dusted himself off and got off the floor, he picked up the phone and it was the president telling him that he loved the book. He read the book. And I want to thank you, Stephen. And he called him Stephen. And he hung up numb, but his life was changed. Why? Because the most powerful man on earth decided to tell him, I know who you are, and I'm proud of you for what you've done. You think his life was changed a bit? Absolutely. Let me ask you a question. How has your life changed? How has your life changed when you know that God knows you better than you know yourself? You say, Scott, I'm in. I, I want to feel this and I want to know this. This is really important and I, and I get it. And it's something I've wanted my whole life. I want to know how I can love God more. I want to be a man who inside says, I love God. That's why I obey God. Well, man of God, as you see in the chart there, I can only tell you what's happened to me. I spent easy a decade trying to get to know God. All self-effort, all on my own, reading every book I could. You say, Scott, you sound a little passionate and obsessional. Yes, if you get stuck with one of those brains, you'll do it too. But knowing God was my first step, and that's your first step. Know God. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you pray and read his word, because until you get the passion and the spirit within you to do that, you won't do that consistently. You see, con you don't need to be great to be consistent. You just need to be consistently great in your passion for God. Next, you want to know God's love. I learned that by going through the Psalms. Uh, God gave me an acronym uh, for the Hebrew word Hased. And I learned all about God's covenant love, God's humble love, God's explosive, uh, God's explosive love, God's steadfast love. It, it was, it was a, he has an enduring love that I just couldn't believe. He has a, and then a divine love, how different it was from mine. And after I knew God, about God and God and his attributes and his names, I learned about his love. And then when we learn about God's love, he takes us to the next level and allows you to see his greatness, his omniscience. See, David didn't get his mind blown because God was everywhere. David got his mind blown because everywhere David went, God was. You see, that's the relationship that he had. You, you know God, and then you know God loves you. And then we know ourselves. You say, well, that doesn't sound too spiritual. Oh, man of God, this is what it says in the Message Paraphrase Bible. The only accurate way to understand ourselves is by what God is, and by what he does for us, not by what we are and what we do for him. God first, then we know ourselves. A man will never love God so much as when he realizes how well God knows him and why. How well God knows him and why. Man of God, knowing God, knowing God is one thing. Knowing that he knows you is by you walking along the path, knowing that you are chosen, 
knowing that you belong to him and knowing that you are a son of his. You see, wouldn't you want to know your son? Totally. Yeah, my son walked out mad the other day because I was trying to help him too much. And I do that sometimes like fathers do. I was trying to help him too much. And he goes, I got this, dad. I got this. And he was angry at me because I, you know, I kept pushing, let me help you, let me help you, let me help you. Because that's what fathers want to do. God is a hundred times, <laughs> many times, infinite times more loving and compassionate over knowing you. And he knows you a hundred percent. The joy of knowing God is in knowing God knows you. I made a mug on it. That's how much I need. I need to drink it. I'm actually a few mugs and I made them for me just so I could read and every morning remind myself what Psalm 139 tells me. The joy, say that with me. The joy of knowing God is in knowing God knows you. Father God, we thank you for your word today. We thank you, Lord God, that you are a God who's passionate about helping your sons, who's passionate about knowing us better than we know ourselves. You're passionate, almighty God, about building our self-esteem, knowing that the greatest power in the universe, not just the most powerful man on earth, the greatest power that created the universe that knows things we can't even fathom, can't even ask questions about, knows me just as well as he knows how a star is made. He knows my pain. He knows our fears. He knows our anxieties that are really undefined fears. And he defines what they are in our lives with his love. He says, here's your fear. Here's my love. This will overflow. This will outdo. This will overwhelm your fear, your anxiety, your regrets. Because this is who I am. The joy of knowing God is in knowing God knows you. Thank you, Pastor Scott. What a wonderful study. The joy of knowing God. <clears throat> knowing God knows you. Men, um, before we go into breakout, I'm going to turn it over to Coach Joe for our ask. Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning. Hope everyone's doing well. Thank you, Brother Andrew. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to cover offering, guys. Uh, we were very familiar with offering, and, and most of you guys who were on, I mean, if anyone's new, fantastic. Very easy to give to the ministry, uh, to giving something bigger than yourself. That's what it's all about. And um, without even putting up that screen, we uh, if we put it up, fantastic. If not, uh, you could give via uh, text. You could give via mail-in a check. You could give right online. Uh, anyone who chimes into this Zoom will automatically get an email sent to you. You can answer right back there or go right to the website and give right on the website. So I wanted to give you that. And while I'm here, guys, I'm covering for Brother Carlos. Brother, friend, and coach to the ministry. Um, doctors are saying he has a touch of an ammonia in his lungs. But praise God, we know the doctor of all doctors. So if mm -hmm. you could just keep him in your prayers for a speedy recovery. They're giving him some drugs to handle stuff and he should be fine, but let's keep lift him up in your in your thoughts today. Thank you, guys. Thank you, coach. And Dennis Labriola. Uh, Dennis lost his dad a few days ago. Tony, who God bless, lived to 95 years old and raised some wonderful children. We're very blessed to have had him. And uh, God's very blessed to have him too, as he's gone to his eternal glory. 